Good afternoon. My name is Kathleen and I'm here uh, this afternoon with Ariel and Mateo and uh, we would like to thank Fostering Success Michigan and the new foster care for this opportunity to capture um, our conversation today. Can you please share your name and your age? My name is Ariel and I am 19 years old. Okay. And my name is Mateo G. I am 17 years old. Welcome to both of you today. We appreciate that you're here to, to visit with us and to share your story, which is really where I'd like to start the next question. Can you share, please, um, how long you have been or were in foster care? Ariel, we'll start with you. Well, um, I am still currently in care, um, but I've been in care for going on eight or nine years. Mateo? Um, I have currently adopted out of foster care, but I spent separately maybe around four, maybe, ish years. In the foster care system? Yes. Okay. Can you share how experiencing foster care impacted your school experience, Ariel? Um, I would say that overall it was definitely difficult um, throughout, I would say, you know, the end of my middle school going into my high school years. It was definitely hard and challenging um, considering just my ultimate goals for, you know, what I wanted to accomplish within high school. Um, I didn't really want to attend things outside of school, whether it be like sports or um, like activities outside of like main classwork just simply because I wouldn't have rides or uh, I couldn't like afford the stuff that would have to be like paid and stuff like that like sports but um, academically I think it was also difficult just because um, I didn't have access when um, when it came to like electronics I would have to go to the public library and stuff like that so it was often a little bit more difficult for me to gain access to um, things when it came to schoolwork and also just towards the end of my high school uh, career when it came to applying for colleges it was really hard because they didn't really understand the school counselors didn't understand fully what exactly I could get and the different scholarships and the different things that I was able to be offered going into college and so um, I had to look out and get those resources myself and find those people that I could connect with that could connect me to those resources. So that was the hardest thing for me. So you just shared that the support that you received did not necessarily meet your needs. Yeah. Were you referring to your foster family or were you referring to the school staff? It was it was definitely both. I could say for both it was um, it was the same. I didn't get a lot of emotional support um, in, in the foster homes that I was in and they didn't really encourage me to want to succeed in school or want to kind of push to the limit of what are you going to do after high school and I never really thought about that and they didn't encourage me to think about it. It wasn't on their minds, it wasn't on mine. Okay. And it was also the same way with the schools where there's the school's intention is, is to get the main, you know, uh, applications to college get you ready for college whereas for me it was definitely a lot difficult because I had no funding to go I had no money I didn't know about the scholarships that were offered so it was my own opportunity to kind of look outside of that and find the different resources outside of school and more within like the child welfare system to help me gain those resources to be able to um, simply like just go to college and afford it what would you like to share with caring adults so that they might understand how what they do impacts kids and help us help the helpers? I think that building a strong connection is imperative. Um, opening up to your youth would probably be the most useful thing because in order for us to trust the first helpful step would, would be to show trust in that person. Um, and by opening up, you feel like that would 
kind of establish a trusting conversation I maybe? Do. Yes. Okay. Honesty will always be rewarded with honesty and that's that's a personal belief that I have and that I carry myself upon. Um, I think that it's important to encourage the youth. I, I believe that I, I would hate to use the word fragile, um, so take that word and, and with a grain of salt here, okay. just for lack of, the, of a better word. But I think being fragile in the system is so very... Constant? Yes, it's, it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much the beginning state of foster care youth. So to be that person's someone, or to be that person's rock in a sense, it would be good. Mateo, earlier you shared that it was difficult and that when you were in the classroom, there were times when it was hard to understand your own behaviors. And I'm wondering if you could talk to that teacher today who might have been in that classroom with you, what, what advice you might give them to help another student who might also be struggling like you were? Um, I think that I would advise them to look past some things um, and understand that bad days and bad phases for any teen um, or any student really, that's an inevitable thing. Mm -hmm. um, and to, in my personal experience, it was very like, it was jolting in a way because I went from a very good student and a very attentive student and um, having you know good grades and all of this to suddenly just dropping to the bottom of everyone's list and like having all of these teachers just not like me um, and the jolting part about it is that there was no in between for that there was no phase from being a well-liked student to being a student that my teachers didn't like or didn't approve of anyway, in, in, in a way. Um, it was very instant. Um, so I feel that if it was noticed in a way that was more, in a way that was softer and less harsh, um, it would have been easier. So I would advise that teacher to look past something that can be seen as a phase and jump in and notice when things are and in a way awry. Like words, I think, like Ariel was saying, can be the best way to combat that. Um, hey, I noticed something's up, this really isn't you. Um, my classroom is always open, you know, just small things like that. I hear check in, yeah. offer Definitely. yourself, ask questions, attempt trust building, understand that trust building is likely a lengthy process for kids who have been traumatized and who have undergone extreme changes in their life, right? Yes. Also, I heard allowing space for kids to act out a little, understanding that behavior is not understood from either side sometimes, and that it's just, it's, it's a response to the situation and not to harshly judge children based on those behaviors. Um, as we come to a close, I would like to thank both of you for being here today with us and for taking the time to share a, your experience, your story, and most importantly yourselves and the successes that you have both enjoyed and 
I, I would just like to thank FSM and the New Foster Care for um, sponsoring this video and this opportunity to share. Thank you.